Carlo, can you hear me? Well, we can hear you, and we are looking at you. You all look wonderful. We want to congratulate you on a spectacular launch and on looking so happy. The American people are very reassured watching you on television. I know, I understand one of the things you're doing is chasing down the Eureka satellite that was put up by the shuttle last July. And I'm especially pleased about that because it shows what we can do in the way of international cooperation as well as science. And I want to congratulate you on that and wish you well. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, we've been working very hard for about a year training for this uh, rendezvous and retrieval, and we've had a lot of fantastic support both in our own country and our own ground support team and the international team all over in Europe, and we're looking forward to bringing back great fun in Puerto Rico. We're looking forward to that, too. I also uh, understand that David and Jeff will be outside the shuttle practicing uh, for the repair of the Hubble telescope and for the future assembly of the space station. And I thought uh, maybe one of them or both would like to comment on it so uh, people can get a good look at you now. And they, when they see you outside in your suits, they'll know who they're seeing. Well, Mr. President, we're looking uh, very forward to the uh, spacewalk. We feel very proud to be able to represent America. And uh, we're very happy of your uh, support of the space station. We think it represents the best of America and their pioneering spirit. And the NASA team has done a really great job of preparing us for our flight. Uh, I think both David and I uh, just can't wait to get there. We're really excited about it. And while you're up there, we're going to be down here trying to support the space program and the space station. As you know, we had a very distinguished commission looking at the whole space station project. They recommended some redesign and some management changes at NASA, but I think this should give us a great deal of credibility. We've got some important votes coming up in the Congress in the next two days. While you're up there, we're going to be down here voting on this project, and I very much hope that we can prevail. And I think, frankly, your success and your work will help us to prevail. You're doing as much up there to help us win the votes down here uh, as anyone, and I thank you for that. Well, Mr. President, we're very gratified by your support of the space station. We certainly all consider it to be a, a, an immensely important project, continuing our leadership in science and technology. Thank you. Let, let me just say one last thing about something that's very important to me. I understand that later in the mission, Janice and Brian are going to be talking with school children around the world. And uh, you may know that my daughter is a big fan of the space program. She's off at the summer language camp now, but... Uh, I want to just tell you how much I appreciate the fact that you're making an international education project out of this mission. That's very important to me. Mr. President, um, we find that using amateur radio is an excellent way of communicating with children all around the world, and we're also able to excite them by using space and science and letting them see space and science in action. We're able to excite them and hope they'll uh, study harder. You have no idea. You may be on this mission creating thousands of scientists for the future just by the power of your example and by this direct communication. And I think sometimes we underestimate the impact that, that human contact in an enormously impressive setting like this can have on children all across the world, not only those with whom you'll talk, but millions of others who will just see it and know that it happened. I want to thank all of you for the wonderful job you've done. We're very proud of you, and we're very proud of all the NASA folks down here who are supporting you. Uh, I want to encourage you and say again that, that I'm behind you, this administration is behind you, and I think the American people are behind you. Mr. President, uh, once again, we thank you very much for your support. It's, uh, it's a real pleasure to be up here at your service. Thank you. Let's hear from the last astronaut there.
I, I just wanted to add my thanks for your support. We all feel that the space program has done a tremendous amount for this country, both in promoting inside the country science education and also with the international partners. And it means a lot to us to know that that support still is around and we're going to have a strong space program in the future. I'm committed to that. The American people in watching you today can see one area of human endeavor in which we are indisputably uh, continuing to lead the world and bringing other countries into partnership. And both leadership and technology and science and partnership with other countries, those are the keys to our future as a people, to our standard of living, to our quality of life, as well as to our ability to continue the American tradition of exploring frontiers. And I'm very proud of you. And I wish you well, and we can't wait till you get home safe and sound, but have a great time up there and learn a lot, and we'll all learn from you. Good luck, and God bless you all. Thank you, Mr. President. <laughs> they can't see us, can they? <laughs> Houston, Houston, this is White House. Calm. They, do look like, they look like they're sort of just settled in the family rec room for an afternoon television, don't they? <laughs> they don't know. They, they know they're still on camera. They can't talk to each other. They're frozen. <laughs> He's trying to get off. There, there they go. That was great. Next television event, mission update. <laughs> Mr. President, there's fairly a memo circulating over the Pentagon suggesting that uh, gays should be allowed to serve in the military if they simply don't advertise their status. Is that what you're uh, likely to strike a ban? I think I should wait until I get the report from the Pentagon. I, don't, I have not received the report. I talked to Secretary Aspen very briefly just a couple of days ago and uh, asked him to, you know, proceed with this and let me know as soon as possible. I think. The American people are, and the military are certainly ready for a resolution. And so, uh, but I can't comment on the specifics until I see. Well, that sounds like a good solution to you. I, I want to see what the details are. There's a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, there's been a lot of uh, very helpful comment, I think, on this whole issue. Finally, in the last few weeks, of uh, Senator Goldwater, I thought some of it was very helpful in what he said. I thought some of the people who testified that, Interestingly enough, on both sides of the issue, in the last set of hearings, really uh, tried to shed more light than he tried to bring down the, the uh, emotionalism of the debate and get people to look at the, the facts. And uh, so I think we're ready to resolve this and get it behind us, and I, I hope that it will happen soon. But I don't want to comment specifically until I get a specific recommendation. But you haven't changed your mind, have you? Absolutely not. No, I think. You know, and I don't, I don't see this as a liberal conservative issue. I mean, you've got Lawrence Carr, who was in the Reagan administration, supporting the idea that there has to be some provision for people who don't do anything wrong, but who are homosexual to serve in the service. You've got Barry Goldwater. You've got a lot of people uh, uh, who serve in, uh, in the, with great distinction in the military who are now in the Congress, taking the same position. Um, so I think the, uh, I think we are coming toward. Uh, agreement on it, and I'm hopeful, but I, I'd like to see it resolved soon. Sir, have you spoken to this fellow who claims to be your brother? No. I placed, uh, uh, I left word on his answering service in California yesterday. I didn't know he was in the air. And I also left word uh, in New York. And I'd like to talk to him, and then I will, I'll have a brief statement about it. But I think I should, I'd like to try one more day to, to I think he's afraid to call you. Well, I hope not. I mean, we left word that it'd be fine for him to he call. Him. Some he's he's been, uh, I think, very uh, appealing and humble the way he's handled this whole thing. Any thoughts on the death of Pat Nixon? Well, I'm very I'm very sad, and uh, I intend to try to speak with President Nixon today. I've talked with him a couple of times in the last. Month when once when he was at the hospital and once when he had just uh, come from the hospital in the last month or so to ask his advice about various things and, and I know that this is you know they had a, a very long and very close marriage and 
This must be a very difficult time for him. I think the American people really appreciate the, the dignity with which she served as First Lady. And I, I hope that you believe that the, the Nixon family has the thoughts and prayers of all the American people. Today.